uh, teach you how to set up a time lock Bitcoin address. This is great if you want to, if you're having trouble saving and you want to lock down a certain amount of money for a certain amount of time. Or it's also great if you want to set up an account for, you know, college graduation, niece, nephew, kid, and you want an address where you can give them control of the Bitcoin um, so they have access to it, but it won't be uh, really accessible till after a certain time. So you first want to start by going to coinb.in. Um, this is the site that creates the address. Uh, you can go anywhere. Go to new time locked address. Um, now this is where you create the site, but it, this whole site is JavaScript. So you don't want to do it online because, you know, you're, this is sensitive information you don't want to give out. So you just want to download. You can download and host the whole website yourself. So as soon as you download it, It'll go to your uh, downloads folder under Coin Master, um, and when you double click it, you see here. You just double click index.html, and then the whole site will launch. But it'll say file forward slash like that. So now you know it's running not on the internet. This is running just JavaScript in your browser. So we'll go ahead and move that one over, and close this one so we don't accidentally use it. Um, the next thing you're going to need is to download a wallet that's going to give you access to um, private keys. Now, you should be using a Trezor or a Ledger or a hardware wallet of some sort. Um, but in this case, you're going to need to have a separate wallet because hardware wallets don't give you access to the private keys, which is a good thing. And the only way to get access to those private keys is if you input your seed phrase into a computer, which you never want to do. So I like to use Electrum. You can go to electrum.org. Go ahead and download it. Um, let's see here. I'll create a new one. You, you know, you're going to create a brand new one. You know, call it, keep doing tests here, time lock three. All right. Say, okay, it's a standard wallet. You want to have a new seed. Do something fresh. You want it to be SegWit. All right. Definitely want to write this down. Preferably, um, you want to write it down on a piece of paper temporarily. Get a piece of crypto metal like this one. I really like this one because it's really basic. Um, it looks like nothing. Two metal plates put together. Uh, I got a little engraver um, where I engraved uh, my, my seed phrases that way. Or you can get sets where you imprint it. These things are all different prices. You can get them really cheap, really expensive. I would just go with that and there's some engravers on Amazon for like 15 bucks um, and then you can get any type of crypto metal I, I just type in crypto metal and there's a whole bunch of different options one where you have little letters but the point is in one where you can stamp it in you just want to make sure you get this um, on something that's more uh, robust than just a piece of paper uh, that way, wherever you put it in a safe, uh, you know, hidden away in your attic, whatever, if the house burns down, there's a flood, you're not going to lose your dings. So, I'm going to go ahead and copy these. I was doing a test earlier. All right, paste. Of course, it's be wise to go to options and to extend the seed word with custom words. Why? Well, if you write down all your seed words on a piece of metal, piece of paper, whatever, if anyone finds those seed words, they have full access to all your funds that those seed words. Granted, it'll be more complex with what we're doing, but it's best just to put a passphrase. That way, it's kind of like on your hardware wallet, you enter a PIN number. This is like, you know, the PIN number for your seed words. So I would definitely check that. Hit next. And then add your password or your extra seed words. I'm going to make it really simple. Do time lock wallet. All right. Extra security there. All right. Then it wants us to enter in. You got to always have to re-enter. They got to make sure you wrote it down. Deal method. The first four letters is what makes it unique. So you only need the first four. Every word has the unique first four letters. Uh, glory, where, absorb, and cancel. And then it wants my extension words, time lock wallet, next. Definitely want a password. This will encrypt it and keep it all safe on your computer if you decide to keep it on your computer, which it's a good idea. So let's go ahead and put a password. 
All right, it says it's strong. And there we go. Now, Electrum is really easy to use. Uh, if you click on the addresses, you'll see all the addresses. Uh, to get the information, you just right click and go to details. Uh, you'll notice the first one is M00. If you go to the next one, go to details, it's M01, and then so on and so forth. Of course, they only show you a limited amount. This only goes to M019. But of course, your seed phrases could go up to, I think, several billion. So just uh, the reason why I mention that is people think that, oh, if you delete your whole Electrum and you re-enter in your seed phrases, it's going to generate all new ones. Like, no. These are always generated in this exact order from these seed phrases. All right. So you'll um, definitely want to note that. So in the label, you're going to put, you know, something. You could put a label here. Put time lock, something like that. So the first thing you're going to want to do is enter in the public key. So, of course, to get the public key, right-click the address, go to details. Here's the public key. All right. Hit copy. Go ahead and paste that in. And then you're going to put, this is the date, date and time. This is the date that the funds will not be available till. So if you're trying to, you know, save for something or you're making this account for that special someone and let's say they graduate, you know, November 1st, 2024. All right, you do something like that. Now, generally speaking, I would say as I'm a, you know, I'm a software developer, you don't want to do time locks more than one or two years because if something happens, what if there's some vulnerability on the Bitcoin network where they find something where they need to patch it? You know, it's possible. And they may do something like, all right, we well, have to make sure you move, move your Bitcoin to a new account. Well, if you lock this, you know, you're saying like, look, this is my retirement money. I'm going to lock it till I'm 65. So I'm going to lock it to, you know, the year 2050. Um, that's going to be a big issue because you're not going to be able to do anything with it. So I wouldn't recommend mo doing more than a year or two. So as soon as you do that, you want to click submit and then you have your new address. So this is the, this is the address you are actually going to send your funds to. All right. So if we go back to my little notepad here, here it is. I'm going to, this is the other example I did. All right. The next thing you need and you have to have this. Without this redeem script, you will never be able to cash out your funds properly, okay? So you need to make sure you have this redeem script. So I'm gonna copy that, and I'm going to paste it. Now, there's a problem with this redeem script. If we go back and we look at the public key, now, people having the public key isn't that, isn't the end of the world, but this is something you generally just don't want to leave out and about, something you want to keep extra private, okay? So if you're going to do what I do and put it somewhere very accessible, like email it to yourself or put it in your notes on your phone, I would recommend not keeping this inside your redeem address. So you can see if I put the public key and I move it over, you see the public key is buried right within the redeem script. So it's best to take that out. Oh, whoops. Why did I do that? Okay, so we know what this is. All right, and there's an AC at the back. So let's put some dashes. All right. So the redeem script is basically this gibberish plus the public key followed by AC. Now, what is this? This is what the, this is the script for the, the time lock. All right, 1101-2024. This is the 1101-2024. That's what it translates to. The B1 stands for the code that says OP check lock time verify. You know, 75 stands for something called drop, and then 21 stands for something else. So this is really the code. This is really what you generated from this time locked address. It basically took this, translated it, um, because this, this is basically saying four bytes, you know, so it's, there's one byte, two byte, three byte, four byte, you know, and this is the, uh, this is the hexadecimal for the Unix time, which correlates to this, all right? That's what that is. So if you're going to be like emailing to yourself, you want to keep it very accessible, you just want to send this, because this has no information that will help anyone. 
this is just whatever. Someone can translate this and know that you wrote uh, 11 2024 This is just an address. I would leave the public key out, you know. But if you don't want to, and that's just too much for you, then by all means, you can just, let's see, save the whole dang thing like that, you know, and I'll take this out. I would much rather uh, you guys would save just this, you know, and, 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 and then I would say, you know, M0 is the address, is the, uh, put on new line, M0 is the address number. So you always remember that it's the very first one, M0, M00, you know, and you could even put the date. This is for, uh, what was the date? Uh, 11-01-2024, 11-01-2024, all right? This is what you can email to yourself, keep very public. That way you have quick access to it. But this is all up to you. If, if you want to keep this more private, you know, you can uh, skip this step and save the whole thing. But I just like to be privacy conscious. So that being said, um, you send money to the address and you're good. So here's an example. This is one I did, uh, I've used multiple times. You see, I'm giving you all the information. Uh, it'll probably be gone by the time you read it. Um, now this address here, this is technically like a, a hash. Uh, so it's basically unreadable. So if you want to verify that the funds that you sent went to it, I would just you know go to a, 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 a blockchain explorer, blockchain.com you know, and put in that address and hit search. And you can see generally um, this format it uses matches Bitcoin Cash as well. So we want to do BTC, not BCH. Um, and you can see this one I did an hour or so ago. It's already got four confirmations. Uh, here it is. These, this is older ones I did because I was testing with it before on the 17th, the 16th, the 14th. All of them, I wasted five dollars, so I've wasted now twenty bucks. Twenty bucks doing tests, so that's the price of this video. So you can see that the hash sent to this address, um, and then the Bitcoin address I sent it from. This is how much it has left in that particular little account. You know, I have so many Bitcoin accounts, I don't even know what to do with myself. But this is that. All right, so you send money. And then your money will be in this address, and it will not be accessible till 11 one 2024 So let's say you want to cash it out. All right, you go to New. You go to Transaction. You want to put in that uh, Redeem script. So that's the big long thing here, which up here was this thing. Or if you wrote it like this, you need to go to Electrum, you know, right-click your very first one, you know, get your public key and fill in the blank. So for this one, I'm just going to use this redeem script. So I already made it and you're going to paste it. Now when it hits load, it goes on the network and it grabs the amount that's left. Uh, it grabs the amount in the account. So if you sent a whole Bitcoin and you're really rich, uh, at least in my opinion, <laughs> you'll have, you know, a one here. Now, this is the fee. You don't want that in the fee. So the way it works is you put in the amount and it automatically updates the fee, you know. So if we go over here and you just go to whatever, use Google, you see that this is $5. So if we only have $5, let's say we're going to just do $1 in fee. That'll go through. But remember, it goes backwards. So we're going to do $4. All right. So we're going to put in... Uh, what am I doing? No, let me go back here. I'm going to put in $4 here. Boom. That's dynamically updated with the difference. And this, I'm sure if we look, is $1. So let's translate that. There you go. It's $1. All right. Now, who are we sending it to? This preferably should be a secure address, you know, on uh, a ledger or a nano uh, type set up but since we're already in electrum we'll go ahead and grab this address so if i go to details you know it has a copy next to the address and i'm going to go ahead and paste the address all right and you're going to click submit now as soon as you submit you're going to get a trans 
this transaction. All right, it's really long. You're just gonna double click it. You're gonna copy, and you're gonna go to sign. All right, and you're gonna paste it in there. Now you need the private key. All right. So again, we go back here. We need the private key for not this one because this is one. The private key for the time lock. All right. So if you want to double check, go to details, make sure it's M00. But to get to private key, we need to right click and don't go to details, go to private key. All right. And then, of course, going to enter our password. And there we go. Now, you tip to just a, if you double click, it'll copy just the first part, and that's all we need. Um, if don't click copy to clipboard, because it copies this junk. So if you double click it, you can just do control C, and that's better. And then you paste. You can hit show if you need to. So you just double click this sign transaction and go to broadcast. This is going to send it to the Bitcoin network. So let me take this back because I was playing with it. I find sometimes the coin, okay, this is set to default. Sometimes this network acts weird. So let's see what it does. So I'm going to hit paste and hit submit. Ah, see, it gave me an error. Mandatory script verify flag failed. Signature must be zero for check multi-sig. I'm not doing multi-signature. Well, let's try changing the network. So you always want to keep it to Bitcoin. Uh, the broadcast, you can do block cipher. See how there's Litecoin, Dogecoin. You want to stick to Bitcoin mainnet. So just do the second one and hit submit. Now when I go to broadcast, try it again. Failed to broadcast error. Well, that's no fun. I have no idea why it's it's messing up on me because it's the 23rd. So it should be good. But that's about it. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments. But this is a feature I really like and I've done a lot of these different uh, locked addresses and they work great. Multi-sig, SegWit address, those are all separate topics. Wouldn't worry about that yet. That's it.